Hey everyone, uh, long time no see. I know it's now the new year. Previously, uh, we were learning Blender together and I'm looking to get back to that. So today, hopefully there's something new I could teach you. Uh, I've personally been kind of within my own uh, Blender journey. I've been kind of straying away from the visuals and doing a lot of other things, but this year I really made an intention to offer myself some space to just do those visuals to, you know, get back to the root of the reason why I started this program. And that's not an issue. I think there's nothing wrong with straying away from like styles or even having the desire to want a certain style. And that's what I, even I'm struggling with. So if that's you, as you learn these new tools and you learn some design stuff, don't worry about playing around with new tools. If it means jumping into After Effects for composition stuff, you don't have to be religious, it's just a blender. Um, and that's just the message I wanted to share before starting this today. But let's just dive right on in and I'm gonna hopefully show you a bit of this circular kind of trippy loop. Maybe you could learn some new tricks with the composition, maybe some tricks with just like shape masking and whatnot. So let's dive in. Okay, let's dive right on in. So per usual, there's a few things that you should do before starting this project. So first things first, press A and then X to delete everything. Now second, you're gonna come over to the right hand side and under that little camera icon for render properties, you're gonna go ahead and tick off a few boxes, starting with ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections for now. Next, make sure you just save. Next, you're gonna head over into your edit and then click preferences. When, you, when you're inside preferences, within the animation tab, you're gonna wanna make sure that your default interpolation is set to linear, not Bezier. If it's Bezier, the loop is gonna be too obvious and I don't think you'll enjoy it very much. So just go ahead and set that to default interpolation linear. And you're Gucci after that. So we're gonna start with some few simple things here. This all kind of just starts off with the cylinder. So what we're gonna do is bring in that cylinder. And the way we do that is press shift A, bring in the cylinder. Now, once you have your cylinder, we're gonna need to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm gonna do this two ways. So one way you can do this is if you press N, you'll see uh, a bit of like a quick item transform tab. If you come over here and you press on this like yellow button, you'll also see the same selections. And then you can also, for those whiz kids out there, if you press R and then X, 90 degrees, you'll rotate it by 90 degrees on the X axis. I'm just gonna go ahead and type in 90 degrees on the X axis. But I'll let you do with that. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is make this a little bit bigger. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger on the Z axis. So within the dimensions, you're going to go ahead and click on the Z and then type in four meters. I like four meters. You can make it eight. If you, you just need to be an even number nonetheless. Um, but personally, I think uh, the way it works, the smaller the number, the slower the animation will be. The larger the number, the faster it will feel. So you could tinker with this later. Everything we're doing here is going to be procedural, or you can just go back and copy it. So the next thing we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to grab our cylinder and kind of position it in a nice space. So press G for grabbing and press Y. So you're moving it and it's locked on the Y axis. And I like to hold down control here and that will pretty much snap it to an even number. So we're gonna snap it right to the start. So I just scrolled in a little bit there and then you can kind of see from here. Now we have it at the start. Okay. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna edit this cylinder so we can like open it up have our camera flying through it. So you're gonna press tab while you're selected on the cylinder. Press three to go into faces mode. That's this third one right here. 
select the face on the front, go ahead and delete it, and then click and then drag and move your camera over here, select the other face, press X, delete that. Okay. Once you have that, we're our, our shape and our cylinder is pretty much set up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and call I'm just gonna rename it by pressing F2, and I'm gonna call this main loop object just because just because and here's a little quick trick now we're gonna have to bring in a camera here and if we bring in our camera oh dilly willy we're gonna have to reposition it so the trick you can do here is if you press tilde and hold it down and go front and what you'll see is we're kind of like positioned in the front of it all press front and then press shift a and bring in that camera and what you'll see now is that camera is just like smack dab right in the cylinder. So if I go ahead and just right click on the little divider here and open up a vertical split, I press tilde, click view camera. You'll see on our right hand side, you can see we're kind of inside the camera here. And we got something set up. So <clears throat> I'm going to save it again because we're making crucial steps here. You're making progress. You're making progress. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is now we're going to play with some modifiers. Actually, no, no, no. Let's animate this first before we start playing with modifiers. So you're going to see we have a timeline down below if you're on default Blender settings. Um, you're going to want to and move that. You can use your arrow keys here and move it to zero. Make sure your camera selected and you're going to your playhead is on the zero. And what we're going to do is we're simply just going to go ahead and keyframe. So I'm going to right click and so single keyframe on the Y axis. And then what you're going to do is bring that playhead all the way to 250. And then see how we made our cylinder four meters. And we just type in four meters. You insert it again. And what you'll see now is our camera is just gliding on through simple as could be and pretty much what we do is we just duplicate the cylinder <coughs> continuously and we pretty much have a loop it's simple as that honestly i think sometimes we put a little too much stress on the perfect loop but shout out to ducky 3d on that Ducky's always it's kind of been the person to drop me into the loop same with nebula okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with some of the modifiers so we have our cylinder here. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of adjust some things. I don't need to see as much as I typically do. For our camera, I'm just gonna do some things not required, but personally it will probably help out. Within this little green button and viewport display, I'm just gonna turn up my passive out just so I could kind of focus on what's in this, not what's not in this. Um. I'm going to go ahead and just turn on a composition guide so I can see. Okay. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to solidify. So back to our main loop object, click add modifier, go down to solidify, click on that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to beef it up a little bit. We'll do 0 0.08. I'm trying to use even numbers here. It doesn't really matter, but then I'm going to go ahead and solidify it again. And what that will do is you'll see it kind of creates this like double layer kind of effect. So I'm going to use 0 0.03. Oops. 0 0.3. I think the way this works is the higher the number you go, it gets kind of funky personally, but I'd keep it low. You want it to just kind of look like this. You want this kind of stacked effect. It's cool. I'm just going to call that solidify 2x. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is subdivide, make it a bit cleaner. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to turn mine up to three. Juice it up because I did pay money for this computer. I don't got a crazy computer, but it's something. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a vertex weight edit. 
And we're gonna head over here to this little checkerboard icon at the end. I'm gonna create this new one and we're gonna call it mask. And this is an important part here. I pay attention crucially, crucially. Now on the type, make sure it's set to do, 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 distorted noise. And uh, under noise basis, take that to cell noise, distortion, cell noise. <clears throat> I'm gonna play with some of these values soon personally um i think what i like to do is make it a bit bigger everyone's different but let's just leave it i'm gonna leave mine size at one and i'll come back to this if i don't like it so i'm gonna head back to our thingy thing and oh my fault guys gotta create a vertex group so within this object data property the green kind of like Pen tool thing, I guess you'd say. Click this plus in the vertex group. I'm just gonna call mine mask. That's all you need to do. Okay, mask. And then within the um, fall off, make sure that you click the invert fall off. This is a very, very important step. Trust me, I was going crazy trying to figure this one out. Click invert fall off. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're going to bring in a mask and that vertex group is going to be our mask. Now, once we with the vertex group, after you have the mask, come in here. Oh, fuck. Then your vertex group, type in mask. You're gonna wanna do group add threshold. And now a very important part is the fall off. You're gonna go ahead and click this little like arrow thing, which will invert it. Now we're gonna bring in a mask now. We're gonna make that the mask. Hmm, interesting. Bring is a bit of an issue. One sec. Ah, sorry guys. I went back, to, I had to fix some stuff when I was editing, but I didn't have my texture set to mask. And when I check it here, and it looks like it's kind of looking kind of busted. So to so just quickly review this, if your stuff is going wrong, um, you need to have the vertex weight edit set to mass group add checkbox on within the fall off. You're going to make sure that this arrow is on here. And then if nothing's coming up, then you need to make sure that you have this enabled. Um, to the correct mass texture and make sure you have that vertex group. So it looks like when I went kind of wild with the amount, it kind of created not that great of a shape. I want mine to be a lot of, a lot of, uh, little shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and just rock with four for now for the 3.0 and okay. We're just going to close that because we're done with that now. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in a solidify modifier. I'm going to pump it up a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and set it to complex mode. I'm gonna call it solid, solidify vertex mass, just to give myself a bit of a clue on what's going on here. Um, next, we're gonna go ahead and add in a decimate modifier, I believe. And just put that so we can lower some of the face counts. Next, we're going to add in a, in a bevel. So, to be frank, I don't know if I've ever, like, after adding this, I don't know if I've even seen it do the freaking bevel, to be honest with you guys. Okay. So, bevel or not, <laughs> not doing anything or not, you could probably just go ahead and delete that because 
to be frank, I don't even think it, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Um, so let's just go ahead and pay attention to what we have here. We have a nice looking crazy kind of shape. And what we're going to do is we need to play around with some of the lighting. So what I'm going to do next is I'm pretty much going to create a new collection. So go ahead and press M while you have your main loop object. And I'm going to call this loop collection. Then what we're going to do, save it again, press shift A. Pressing it, I like to hold down tilde and look at it from the top now. Press shift A, collection instance, loop collection. Press G and Y, drag it, hold down control. And you'll see it matches. I'm gonna duplicate it one more time on control. And after the second time, it pretty much has it kind of like correct, I guess you would say, in terms of the steps we did. So you can just duplicate that. So if you press Shift R a few times, it'll duplicate it to the infinite. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take my loop collections and then put them in a collection of their own. Loop collection. Collection. Oh well. I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna make this one yellow. So now you can kind of see then our animation here. We have a nice like slow moving animation. And it loops perfectly. So what's next, Micah? Colors. We need colors and lighting when you play with materials. Um, what I'm going to do to keep this simple, let's head into the shading tab now. Just going to do a bit of workspace cleanup here. Join this area. We won't be needing everything. Move ring closed. Oh, I forgot I have my thing set to exercise, guys. What the hell? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just split it vertically, make one the camera so I can kind of see what's going on. Um, now, first things first, let's play with some of the material. I'm going to click this new button to add a new material. I remember I just liked really like to mess around with, with this one. I just made it kind of metallic. I kept some of the roughness up, to be honest with you. So to be H, we're going to go back to this. But just set it to like 0 0.8 metallic and then keep the roughness to about like half or so. Or we could make it like 1.2. We're not really depending on that much reflection here. Retain down. I'm going all over the place. Let's set the pause button real quick. Now, within the world properties, this is that red button. We're going to go ahead and press 0. We're just going to turn the strength down to 0. We want it dark. And which you'll see if you enter rendered, it's just going to be dark, which is fine. Um, okay. Now, what I did was I, within my initial animation, I had some lights. I had four lights just kind of going through. And what we're going to do is pretty much create those four lights. Now, before we create those, you're going to want to make sure you're in the right you don't want to keep making things in the looping collections because these things are going to get out of hand. So let's make sure you click the like default collection, I'd call it. Once you click the default collection, let's go ahead and bring in a light. And we're going to bring in an area light here. And I'm just going to make this one rendered so I can kind of see what the fuck is going on. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is what I did is I press G and Y and I drag over my light. Then I press G and X. Let's move my light a little bit to the side. G and Y again. Kind of gonna want to see what's going on here. And now we're gonna rotate this bad boy. So I'm gonna do it this way just so you guys can kind of see. What I'm doing is I'm rotating on the Y axis. And I'm just gonna kind of like point it that way. And I'm gonna drag it down the G. And Z. I'm just going to keep rotating it. I want it to be kind of like somewhere around here. Okay. <coughs> I 
crazy. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to drag it on the x-axis. I'm pretty much just going to type in negative, negative 125. So now it's like kind of flipped. Yeah, need some magic right now. And we're going to duplicate these again, shift D and drag it up on the z-axis. And what we're going to do with these bad boys is we're going to have to find a whole new angle. Maybe that's like, hmm. Maybe that's around like 70 degrees. So this one will be negative 70. And you'll see now we have a little bit of some light going on. What you're going to do next for that light property gonna go ahead and just juice it up so maybe give it like 50 power because I like to cut it close so what we did now you can kind of see we have some something light in the way now I like to add another light inside just to give more of that depth as we're going through so the light I'll be adding next is called a point light. And it looks like a little circular thing in the viewport. And you press G and Y, I'm gonna bring that point light in and I'm just gonna bring it like right about here. I'm gonna make mine about 10 and we'll leave it like that too. Okay. Now I'm gonna do a very important part, I think. So within all our lighting, we want it to follow the camera. We don't want to just lose that lighting and have to duplicate it the whole way through. And the way we do that, I'm going to show you a very simple way. So you're just going to do see all of these things in your like layer list. You're going to click all of the lights by holding down control and click and hold, make sure you're holding shift and drop the set parent on the camera. And what you'll see now is as we move through it in the view, you can see in like our primal view, you see the, the lights are moving through. So now we have the lights moving through. Don't worry about the glitch at the end. That's actually like, it's just like a blended thing because it's starting at one and not zero. Okay, so what's next? <laughs> What's next is we need to tinker with some of these lights. So personally, I played around. I'm going to open up my old project. Don't mind the whatever the specifics here. It's going to be different because we do things differently every time. You see the colors I chose are kind of random. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. <laughs> so I'm going to bring in this yellow color. And your lights are going to be in here. Make sure we have blue yellows as well. This yellow color. And we have a bit of like a purple. The reason why the colors, we want the colors to be kind of wacky and crazy is because once we bring it into the compositor and we start doing all those crazy effects, the more like dynamic of a color range you kind of have, it makes it just like really cool. That's the only reason why I kind of do it to be honest. I don't have much of a rhyme or reason behind it. It's just like the way they all interact. I'm going to crank all of my lights up by like a hundred in power. And then that point light, I'm going to go ahead and just make it like a fucking like a dark blue or something. Oh, we don't want that to be a hundred. What you can do with the point light is you can make the radius a bit, a bit small. So if I make it like 0 0.1, now it has this like kind of interesting effect. Okay. So we have 
the lighting kind of set up. I want to tinker with a few little things in color management. You're going to go ahead and within look, you're going to turn on some of the contrast. I like very high contrast because we're going to get those colors to be kind of wild. I started playing around with using curves. All you really want to do is make like an S kind of thing. <laughs> and from there, or like a, like a wave. That's completely up to you. Now we have something going on here. The next thing we're going to do is actually with the camera. I'm going to play around with some depth of field so we can get a bit more of like, it's just an interesting contrast. All I'm really playing here with is a lot of contrast. So I'm going to crank the focal distance to be kind of like different. So you can do that by pressing E. And I played around with the f-stop a lot. I made it really low, probably around like one. I'm gonna make it around there, just so like. I want like this portion to be seen. I want the rest of them to kind of like be a bit of a blur. So that's around six. Okay. Here's where things get a bit fun. It's a compositor. Now, a few things before we enter that zone. I'm going to go ahead and create a new texture. This is to make like a bit of a grain. I'm going to do noise. I'm just going to call this grain. Fill the brush. Second, we're going to set up our output. I'm just going to click render region, crop to render region. This is where you can play around with social media settings. If you're like, I want this on Instagram, you don't have to have a nine, uh, 1920 by 1080. You can have a 1080 by 1080 or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and set my output folder. Try to be organized, you know. Oops, it's a wrong project. So many projects, you know. This was all an experiment initially when I first started this project. So I suggest when you doing these things, don't follow it specifically the way I do. Just go ahead and do it the way you want. Um, so within file format, make sure it's FFmpeg video, container, MPEG4, output quality, perpetually lossless. Now we're just going to go ahead and press. Actually, no, we're just going to go over here and click render image just so we can get something we can see for our compositor, get some data in the system. So when in your ever compositing, you know, checkbox, use nodes. I'm just going to go ahead and drag this. I'm going to press shift a viewer, bring a viewer in. Then I'm going to press shift a again, reroute, I'm gonna drop that in here and connect that to my viewer. Now what you'll see here, if you press V, you can kind of zoom out a little bit. You'll see your, your composition. Now we're going to play with a few things here. First, we're going to bring in that um, texture. So we're going to press shift a texture. And we're going to select that grain. And then we're going to bring in a mix node. And I personally like the color dodge the last time I played around with it. I'm going to drop that in there. And we're just going to bring it down to like half. You can kind of see slowly we're getting something already. Let me just. Now we'll bring in an A glare. And I'm going to play with streaks. And you can see as you play with the threshold, you get the threshold. What it essentially is, is it only applies to pixels brighter than the value. So if you crank it all the way up, it's going to be dark. Bring it all the way down, it's going to be crazy. Up to you on that. But what I like to do is hold shift and just kind of drag. And I want a little bit of like a glowy kind of thing going on here. It's adding some emphasis to it all. Um, the next thing we're going to do 
is we're going to go ahead and add in a um, another mix node. Actually, no, 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 my fault. A lens distortion. So what the lens distortion will do, it's like this crazy, like you'll see it's just like, pew, 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 like it's cool. Um, it brings in that like cool, uh, trippy kind of vibe. So what I did is I, I cranked it up, not that much. I'll go ahead and fit, so it fits in the frame. I only want it a little bit, to be honest. I don't want too much going on here. I'm bringing a bit of some jitter, that's more noise. Now second, we're just gonna go ahead and bring in another mix node. This time, we're gonna make it subtract. I was playing around with this. And then, honestly, like, just scroll through the colors and you'll kind of find, uh, let's see. So you don't want anything too close to white. What you can also do is just kind of tone it down a bit. Like personally, I'm liking this a lot. This cool like color. And then if I crank it up, I get it looking a little bit too crazy. And you can get crazy with this, to be frank, guys. Like. If you want, you could throw in another mix node and then see where that goes. And you can add in like a fucking difference value and then turn it down. And you get this like funky thing. I think it's just all being like super random. The more random you are, sometimes you'll get something cool. Or you can even like connect this down here. <laughs> the difference connected to two colors down here. And what does that bring you? I think that's just how people like discover these like random cool things. And if you want to, you can bring in another lens distortion. And where does that go after you add in another level to it all? Um, and you can distort it like this or like this. And like, what does that create? Like, it creates some wacky settings. But I think it's what it makes it kind of cool. So I'm going to add a little bit of distortion to mine, actually. Make it a bit more of this, like, tunnel kind of feel. Um, I believe that might be it. But I want to add one last thing. If you're rendering this and it's not, like, kind of looping, I believe it should. I'm going to do one last thing just to make sure that I don't set you guys up for failure. So there's something called, let's go back into shading. There's something called a volume kind of piece. So you'll see, whoa, that's crazy. So I'm going to create something called this volume. So I just brought in a default cube and within the principle of BSDF, our principal volume, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of bring that in here, connect it to volume. And what that does is it pretty much creates this like fog. And you'll see as you get closer, like the fog is here. But what we want to do um, is we want to always kind of make sure that that fog exists because we don't. You can see it gets closer. I don't think we're going to run this issue with this animation, but as it gets closer to the end, you'll kind of sometimes see that slight visual difference. You don't want that. So you're just going to go ahead and parent that cube to the camera by holding no shift. And you can kind of see within our thing, we still got it going on. Oh my God. How could I forget the one last thing? <laughs> Let's rotate this thing. So. I totally didn't even include that. Um, the one last thing we're going to do now is we're going to rotate the cylinder. So go on your zero, enter a single keyframe on the Y axis, and you're holding down your main loop object, and just rotate it by 360. And what you'll see is if you go back into my shading, 
now we have it rotating so now the colors are gonna be like going kind of nuts because keep in mind you have these lights going through so now the colors are just shining through the lights and it'll create this oh my god it's gonna be so cool i swear okay so you see our compositing we got our colors and everything kind of set up now all you need to really do i'll set you off here is click render animation and you'll be done and you can come back and if you want to just mess with the format so you can get it on your social you can change that and that should be it so i'm gonna go ahead and render this and then we're gonna chat a little bit before i set you off congratulations you've done it once again out of all the tutorials and i really appreciate honestly i really appreciate everyone that has sent me messages about my tutorials i've people that have given great constructive feedback as well i i do see those things and i, I appreciate it because i think um i don't know making youtube videos can get kind of i don't know just like dull is not the word i'm looking for but it's like not that motivating because you know you're kind of making it and it's going on to avoid in that's cool, but I really appreciate whenever I see people tag me in creations they made. I've seen people make like some concert visuals for like these like uh, indie band. They DM me on Instagram and they showed me their finished piece, and I was like, "Wow, that's so that's so cool." It really brought the magic in my heart, and I think that's why I want to continue like going down this Blender path and teaching some of the Blender stuff I know. I think there's a lot of Cinema 4D and things like that, and those programs are cool. Don't get me wrong but they're expensive. Um, and if you're someone that, you know, probably comes from a similar background of me, it's like, you can't, you couldn't really afford those things. And a lot of those tools, you can't really pirate either. But Blender, on the other hand, is free and the community is constantly giving. And I want to be part of that community and just continuously give. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for showing up for yourself. Um, thank you for connecting with me. I created a new Instagram just for visuals. Um, but don't be a stranger. Say hi. Let me know what you thought. Let me see your creation. I love to see it. I love to see the iterations that you do too. Um, besides that, much love. And I hope to see you again.